In this video, I will show you an unfiltered AI chatbot for ethical hacking. This is Hacktrix Assistant. Before we dive in, let's have a little bit of context on what is Hacktrix. Hacktrix is a compilation of ethical hacking resources. This is very popular, especially for those who are playing Capture the Flags. You can see different categories here, such as pen testing methodologies, reconnaissance techniques, and a ton of cheat sheets on how to enumerate a specific network service. The creator of this site is also the author of the popular tool called LinPs. This is an automated Linux privilege escalation enumeration tool. Now that we have an idea on what is Hacktrix, let's go straight to the chatbot. The site is hosted on Hacktrix.ai. This is just similar with other large language models. Only difference is that this is designed for ethical hacking meaning the responses are not filtered and you can ask anything you want. Let's start with a basic question. Let's pretend we don't know anything about ethical hacking. Sending, still sending, maybe it's thinking. Here we go. We see now a series of response, but let's wait for it to finish. Let's go to the top. It says here we can use a tool called nmap. There is also one parameter, which is dash SV. It also mentions another set of tools such as who is and dig. Those are used for DNS enumeration. Next one is to perform web app scanning. Their first tool is Nikto. This is no longer actively maintained and there is more modern tools as an alternative. So if I were to use this tool, I may get false positives or I may miss something. This is where our own knowledge of the topic comes into play. Although we have a chat bots like this to help us, it is still better to verify some of the information we are getting. It also provided two more tools, which are the OASP Zap and Burp Suite. This is good because it gives users different options and not only CLI tools. Next on the list will be to do vulnerability scanning against the website. We can use OpenVast and Nessus. It only gives a simple overview about the tools, but I guess we can ask more about it to give more details. Aside from using automated tools, we can also perform manual testing. One of the vulnerabilities we can test is cross-site scripting. We can inject an alert between script tags. We can also do SQL injection on the input fields, or maybe some directory traversal to access some files inside the server. Next is to enumerate the software version and vulnerabilities against content management systems like Drupal. It gives us one option to do that. Last will be to crawl the website to uncover the directory structure. This allows us to find more interesting endpoints and possibly files on the web server. At the bottom, we have here some few examples of the commands. It includes Nikto, Nmap, and Zap CLI. Although the examples are very basic, any beginner will already have a high-level overview on what are the things he can perform against a website. Now let's be more specific by asking it how to detect vulnerabilities using a particular tool. It looks like it is now including more details on the response. Let's scroll up. It emphasized the use of NMAP scripting engine that can detect known vulnerabilities. We have here an example command that will detect the service versions. We already saw this from the previous response, so nothing new. Okay, so now we see how we can pass scripts to NMAP by using this parameter. There are two example categories, Vuln and Default. We are interested with the Vuln category. There is also an option to specify a specific vulnerability. Here is an example for Apache Struts, which is targeting port 80 of the server. More examples below. At this point, we are slowly learning the powerful capabilities of NMAP because aside from scanning for open ports, it can also scan for particular vulnerabilities. At the bottom, it provided an example output. This is useful if you just want to have a basic idea on how the output looks like without performing the actual scan against a live target. How about password cracking? Let's see if it can decode this base64 encoded string. It was able to understand that the string is not a hash, but rather a base64 encoded string. And of course, it was able to decode it easily. Let's give it a harder question this time. Here we go. Let's see, what does it say? It is an Apache MD5 password hash, and it has the APR hash identifier that is used in HTPasswd files. It gives us instruction on how to crack it using John the Ripper and Hashcat. Moving down a bit, it shows us the actual command we can use, as well as a Python script to perform the cracking. I like this because it gives us several options. If you want me to attempt cracking it with a word list you provide or common passwords, let me know. Oh, so it can perform the cracking by itself? Interesting, let's try that. Oh, well, it doesn't perform any cracking. It only guides us on how to perform it. Fair enough. 
I don't think chat bots like this will have the necessary resource to perform password cracking. It now asks us if we want it to generate a Python script to attempt cracking using common passwords. Okay, fine. I'll let you do it. So we can import an aprmd5 function from passlib module. Then it puts some common passwords inside a list and loops through each of them and performs tests against the hash. Pretty basic, but at least we have an idea on how it is done programmatically. Let's try asking it to generate an exploit. For those who are not familiar, Eternal Blue is one of the most sophisticated exploit ever made. It is unauthenticated remote code execution used against older version of Windows. Let's see what it got for us. It provides a high-level explanation, which is always good. It walks us through on how to exploit it using Metasploit, but we don't want that. We want a custom script. At the end, it shows us a simplified version of the Metasploit script used. It offers again to build a POC for it. So, I guess this is it. Let's agree, but tell it to generate it in Python. Let's wait for a bit. It's taking too long, so I will pause the video and come back again. So the generation took a while to complete, but let's see the response. As I said a while ago, this exploit is one of the most complex out there. So that's the reason why it was not able to generate it fully. Yeah. However, it produced a script to detect the presence of the vulnerability. On the high level, it first connect to the SMB port, then send the negotiate protocol request to tell the service that we want to use it. Then it crafts a special request to possibly trigger the vulnerability. Finally, it parsed the response from the server to see if it is indeed vulnerable. Looking at the script, it imports two modules used for network connection and to handle the bytes data. Then it has a function to perform the initial connection, followed by another function that will attempt to trigger the vulnerability. If you have been watching my previous videos about exploit development, you will be familiar on these constructs. These are just data represented in bytes that are sent through the wire. Going further down, we have another function that most likely used to parse the response from the server. This is where we determine if the target is vulnerable or not. If it sees this byte signature, it is vulnerable. We want to understand this byte sequence. Since we are already here, let's ask our friend. As per Hacktricks, this is the actual session setup response from the server. So this is an NT status error code. More specifically, this signifies that the server has ran out of resources. Part of the eternal blue exploit is to perform buffer overflow. So it just makes sense that when we run the exploit, we will receive this kind of messages from the server. This byte sequence is represented in little Indian order. Oh, well, it also mentioned it here at the last item. I didn't notice it. Although Hacktrix was not able to produce the full exploit, I think this is still a good thing. It gave us a POC on how to trigger and detect the vulnerability, meaning we have the working blueprint already. We just need to tweak the data into a proper command that will perform the remote code execution. Now let's ask it to generate a less complicated exploit. Looks like it is able to generate a full POC for it. I won't discuss in depth the heart bleed vulnerability as I already had a video about this in the past. So we will just skim most parts. This is a vulnerability in 2014 which allows unauthenticated access to the server's memory. It happened in OpenSSL, which is an implementation of TLS protocol. It allows the attacker to read up to 64 kilobyte of data from the memory. The POC initiates connection to port 443 of the server. Then it performs the initial TLS handshake, and it sends a malformed heartbeat request, which will trigger the vulnerability. Finally, it gets the response from the server, which includes the data from its memory. Now, for the script itself, it seems this is much simpler from the one I created. Well, that is my first difficult exploit. And during that time, I was still learning in depth the TLS protocol. Anyway, moving along, we see here the full POC. It provides another instruction at the bottom. So in summary, Hacktrix can still be used in generating exploits for less difficult vulnerabilities. But it may just give you a guide if it cannot generate it fully. I think there are more things we can do with Hacktrix Assistant. I suggest to explore it yourself and see if this will help you be a better ethical hacker. Thank you for joining me in this quick video. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.